Grand Prix motor racing came first time to Switzerland in 1934 to the Bremgarten circuit, located just outside the town of Bremgarten, near the Swiss capital of Bern. The Bremgarten circuit was the dominant circuit on the Swiss racing scene. It was a fast 7.27 kilometers or four and a half mile stretch made up of public roads that went through stunning countryside and forests, sweeping from corner to corner without any real length of straight. From the outset, Bremgarten's tree-lined roads, often poor light conditions, and changes in road surface made for what was acknowledged to be a very dangerous circuit, especially in the wet. Even after it stopped raining and the sun came out, the trees covering the circuit were still soaking wet and water would drip onto the tarmac for at least an hour. Conditions at this circuit were similar to that of the Nürburgring in West Germany, and this circuit was as highly popular with drivers as the Nürburgring was. But before we dive into the action on the track, let's rewind a bit. The championship had an earlier rendezvous at the famed Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the third round. However, the world championship contenders, driven by a deep respect for the true essence of Grand Prix racing, collectively decided to give it a pass. It simply didn't fit the bill. The race, which featured an all-American field, was won by Johnny Parsons, his first and only Formula One World Championship race win. So, with that chapter behind us, the spotlight shifted to Bremgarten, where the formidable Alfa Romeo duo of Giuseppe Farina and Juan Manuel Fangio found themselves in a neck-and-neck -neck battle. Tied with nine championship points apiece, they were the leading protagonists in this high-speed drama. Over the course of the final two days of practice, the Alfa Romeo team maintained their grip on the leaderboard, showcasing their prowess. However, Ferrari began to close the gap on their arch rivals. Among the Alfa Romeo trio, it was Juan Manuel Fangio who asserted his dominance, consistently topping the charts throughout the practice sessions. Giuseppe Farina and Luigi Fagioli, his teammates, lagged slightly behind but remained formidable competitors. Ferrari, on the other hand, displayed clear signs of improvement. Luigi Villoresi, in a refined Ferrari, closed the gap to Alfa Romeo, now trailing Fagioli by just one second in the updated Ferrari car. Alberto Ascari, piloting the standard 125 Ferrari, proved his mettle, trailing Villoresi by a mere seven-tenths of a second. Notably, Philippe Etoncelin, the veteran Talbot privateer who was regrettably not retained by the works team, showcased his skill by emerging as the fastest among the Talbot Lago cars during practice. Right behind him on the grid was Yves Giraud Cabantus, the speediest among the works Talbot Lago drivers. In the midst of this fierce competition, Prince Bira emerged as the fastest Maserati driver, securing the eighth spot on the grid. Trailing him were the Talbot Lago pair of Eugène Martin and Louis Rosier. Amidst the warm and sunny backdrop of Bremgarten, the stage was set for a thrilling battle on the iconic circuit. However, Bremgarten was notorious for its challenging and uneven track surface, posing a formidable test for drivers even under the clear skies. The drivers have to compete 42 laps. The complete race length is 305 kilometers. As the race began, Juan Manuel Fangio, in spectacular fashion, executed a near flawless start, catapulting himself into the lead. Giuseppe Farina and Luigi Fagioli, his Alfa Romeo comrades, were left trailing in his wake. But Alberto Ascari, representing Ferrari, had no intention of staying behind. He deftly maneuvered past his teammate Luigi Villoresi and swiftly overtook Fagioli before the first lap concluded. The initial excitement was soon tempered by an unfortunate incident involving Eugène Martin. Racing for Talbo Lago, his car careened off the track at Amet Corner, a dangerous turn. Thankfully, the French driver emerged unharmed, but his car lay in ruins. At the end of that dramatic first lap, Fangio held the lead, with Farina and Ascari in close pursuit. Fagioli trailed behind in fourth, and Villoresi followed in fifth place. Behind them, Prince Bira, Yves Giraud Cabantus, Philippe Tancelin, 
Louis Rosier and Eugène Martin completed the top 10. As the race progressed, Alberto Ascari proved his mettle by sticking close to the two leading Alfa Romeos. Meanwhile, Fagioli appeared to struggle, gradually losing ground and slipping into the clutches of the pursuing pack. However, hopes of a Ferrari challenge were dashed when Ascari was forced to retire on lap four due to a broken oil pump, leaving Villarese as the sole contender for the Scuderia. Villarese valiantly carried the Ferrari banner, managing to overtake Fagioli and maintain his pursuit of the Alfa Romeos. But on lap nine, his race took a heartbreaking turn as a blown engine brought his campaign to an abrupt end. Meanwhile, Luigi Fagioli managed to regroup, securing third place, albeit at a considerable distance from the dominant Alfa Romeos of Fangio and Farina. Behind him, Prince Bira's Maserati was steadily closing in on fourth place. On lap 15, Prince Bira became the first of the front runners to make a pit stop for refueling. This temporarily promoted Philippe Etoncelin to fourth place. However, Etoncelin's race soon turned sour as gearbox problems surfaced, causing him to slip behind the works Talbo Lagos of Louis Rosier and Eugène Martin. Ultimately, these issues led to Etoncelin's retirement on lap 25. The trio of Alfa Romeo drivers had pulled off a remarkable feat, lapping the entire field by lap 33. Fangio, in the lead, faced relentless pressure from Farina, who had earlier set the fastest lap of the race, but couldn't quite overtake his teammate. Meanwhile, Fagioli had made a remarkable recovery, catching up to Farina. However, as the race entered its later stages, disaster struck for Fangio. On lap 33, he was forced to make an unscheduled pit stop due to engine troubles. It quickly became evident that the issue was unrepairable, leading to Fangio's heartbreaking retirement despite his earlier domination. In the absence of the Ferraris and Fangio's Alfa Romeo, the remaining Alfa drivers were untouchable. Farina continued to lead the race, fending off intense pressure from Fagioli, who trailed him by a mere four-tenths of a second at the chequered flag. Behind them, Louis Rosier delivered an outstanding performance, securing a comfortable third place. His unconventional strategy of forgoing fuel stops paid off handsomely, allowing him to finish a lap down on the Alfa Romeos. Prince Bira, who had shown promising form throughout the race, finished in fourth place, one lap behind Rosier. The race had its share of challenges and triumphs, but ultimately, it was Alfa Romeo's day of dominance at the Swiss circuit of Bremgarten. After the first two rounds of the championship, Giuseppe Farina had firmly asserted his dominance, leading the driver's table with 18 points. Luigi Fagioli trailed behind with 12 points, while Juan Manuel Fangio held the third position with nine points.